Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our services for this week. Um, happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Uh, I'm very sorry that we weren't able to meet in person today, but the roads are pretty icy, uh, and I didn't think it was a good idea to risk any injury because of that. So we'll have our uh, services online today. Today, besides being Valentine's Day, it's also Transfiguration Sunday. So our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them, and his garments became radiant and exceedingly white, as no launderer on earth could make them. Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to answer, for they became terrified. Then a cloud formed overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. All at once they looked around and saw no one with them anymore except Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to relate this to anyone, what they had seen, until the Son of Man rose from the dead. So in our scripture this morning, we find a very important moment in the life of Jesus and also a very important moment in the life of the church. As Jesus takes Peter, John, and James up to the mountain to pray, with him he is changed into a splendid being. Moses and Elijah also appear with Jesus before the three apostles. Why then is it so important for them to be with Jesus? Well, Moses is important because he is the giver of the law. A towering figure in Hebrew culture, Moses was also one of the few people that had ever spoken to God. He was there to show that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law of old. Elijah was there because he was one of, if not the greatest prophet. He had also spoken to God while he was on earth. He was there to show the apostles that Jesus was the fulfillment of all the prophecies. And all of this was so bewildering to the apostles that they didn't know what to do. Peter is the apostle that I probably identify with the most, not because he became the rock of the church, but because he would try so hard to do the right thing or try so hard to find the right words, but often failed to do so. So here he says, Jesus, we should make three altars, one to you, one to Moses, and one to Elijah. And he said this because this is what they would have done in the past. Whenever there was something holy that happens under the old law, uh, they would set up a holy site so that others may come to that site as well. However, God had other plans for them on this day. Now, as if all of this transfiguration, the seeing of Moses and Elijah would not have been enough to impress the apostles, to prove to them that Jesus was who he claimed to be, a cloud comes over the mountains as well, and the voice of God speaks, saying, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. And this is what God is trying to get across to them. This is my Son. This is the Messiah. He is the incarnation of me on earth. You need to listen to the things that he is saying to you. See, Jesus at this time, he was dealing with an issue that he had been trying to get across to the apostles. See, he had been telling them for some time that he was going to die. But they just simply could not believe him. They didn't fully understand that this is what was required of Jesus. And so he takes them up on the mountain and he allows them to see his true form just for a moment so that their faith can be bolstered for the difficult road that laid ahead for them. And this is why they were taken there to see these great sights. So what does all this mean for us today? Well, taken at face value, the lesson here is pretty clear. We're to listen to the words of Jesus and to act upon the things that he told us to do. We should be hungering for the words, to devour those words so that we can live a life according to his teachings. We are also to be encouraged in our faith through the, the story. You see, Jesus didn't just show his true nature to the three apostles so that they would have a nice story to tell amongst one another. 
He did this so that they would be able to relay it to others after his death, so that they could see that this man was truly the Son of God, that it would come down through, and this story would come down through the ages to be told to us, so that our faith could be bolstered as well. Let's try to think of it this way. Have you ever had a brush with a celebrity in your life? Have you ever spent some time, however brief, with someone that you were truly in awe of when you met them? When I was a young man growing up in Oklahoma, we had a sports banquet when I was in seventh grade at the end of our sports seasons. Now there happened to be a pretty famous person that was living around the town of Guthrie at the time. And that person was Ferguson Jenkins. Now, if you're not familiar with Mr. Jenkins, let me fill you in. He was a pitcher in the major leagues, but not just any pitcher. He was good enough to make the hall of fame. He's primarily known for his time with the Chicago Cubs. He won 284 games while he was pitching and had over 3,000 strikeouts during his career. He is known as one of the 15 black aces. A black ace is a pitcher of African descent that won 20 games in one season. And he actually leads this category, having done it seven times. Now, he retired the year that I was born in 1983. So I can't say that I ever saw him pitch a game where he pitched live. But as you know, baseball is a game that's passed from generation to generation, and I was well aware that it was a big deal that he was coming to speak to us seventh and eighth graders about whatever he chose that day. And all of us uh, young athletes, we were so excited that he was going to come and be there with us. Now, I can only remember the gist of his speech. I know that it was about working hard, and I know that it was about being honest on and off the field. And I also know that during his speech, he asked questions of us that were in the, in the audience listening to him speak. And I remember that I, uh, I answered one of those questions, much like today where I don't have a problem standing up and speaking. Even as a child, I didn't have a problem standing up and speaking. So I know that because he gave me this baseball. And you can see, maybe you can see a little bit there. Um, I know that he liked my answer because he gave this to me. And it's a baseball with his autograph on it. And it says, to Eric, peace, Ferguson Jenkins. And then the date of his Hall of Fame uh, when he was inducted. And I remember being so in awe of Mr. Jenkins. Uh, someone who had achieved so much in a game that I revered so strongly. Now you may be thinking, wow, nice story, Pastor. What does that have to do with any of us? or with our scripture today. Well, I think of it this way. When I met Mr. Jenkins, I was so inspired to try and work harder at, at athletics, specifically baseball, but I was also inspired to try and play honestly. Now I felt that way because he was someone that was to be looked up to. He was someone that had reached the highest peaks of his profession. And I think that's how the apostles probably felt after the transfiguration of Christ as well. See, they had known that he was the Messiah, or at least they had felt that. And they had must have believed or they wouldn't have been following him. But after seeing him transform into all of his glory, there could no longer be any doubt. See, the feelings of doubt or trepidation that they had had as he had been telling them that he was going to be leaving them soon, they were now being pushed aside as they realized that he was truly more than just a man. Now they knew without any doubt that they would follow him and they were inspired to do this even more in his name because they knew how truly great he was after the transfiguration. And what an amazing gift that's been given to all of us. This story that's been passed down through the ages. It is one that we can point to during our difficult times to help bolster our faith. You see, we know that Jesus was not just a man. He was not just someone who laid out ways to live your life and that making sure that they are full of kindness and giving. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior of all that would accept him into their lives. And if you haven't asked him into your heart, I pray that today is the day that you will. I pray that you will accept the Son of God and let him transform your life just like he was transformed on the mountain. If you're not sure how to do this and, or you're ready to take that step, I'd love to talk to you more about it. 
My challenges for you this week are to consider how you can increase your faith. What is it that you can point to, like the apostles can point to this transfiguration that can help you make your faith grow? And what is it that you need to do to make sure that you're living and serving the transfigured Son of God? Amen. All right, we'll see you next week, guys.